Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the ADA podcast. I'm your host Briggs and like always, welcome to All Day Anime. And today we're talking about villains in Animu or the importance of villains. Uh, joining me today we have Too Spooky, the anime dude, and a, our new special guest for the day is Mr. Complete Random. What is up guys? What's up? Anime was a mistake. Glad to be back. <laughs> this podcast was a mistake. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It's uh, fantastic. Good to be here again. It, Thanks for having me. Yes. Of course, guys. Anytime. It's honestly like one of my highlights of my week, which is kind of sad, actually, when I think about it. But <laughs> <sighs> the struggle. Anyway, villains. I don't know if we want to start talking about like what villains we really like or just talk about the importance like of villains. Ooh. Uh, Someone I mean, else take the floor. specifics. I think it's just important to... To know how big of a role they can play in a story and how they can make or break a show. When a well, show doesn't have relatable villains, it kind of makes it hard to get into yeah. it for me personally at all. It's so true because the villains are often the people who are like the proactive people, especially in Shonen. So like whatever your protagonist does, his type of morality or like his like morals and stuff, it's all based on like off of his reaction to what villains do. So like sometimes it's not even like the protagonist driving the story. A lot of the time it's like the main villains. So, like, your villains could really improve the quality of your anime. Exactly. And there's so many times where the best villains, in my opinion, are the ones that are almost relatable in a sense. Like, they're just people, and they have their own goals and objectives. I, and, I agree completely. And they're not just bad for the sake of being bad, like a Dragon Ball Z or whatever we talked about before. Well, yeah. we, could, we could go ahead and mention the, the Ragnarok group who... Uh, Many of them joined that group, and they were the villains. But, but they ended up becoming the the like joining the good guys afterwards. And you're talking about Kanichi right now. Mm-hmm. Of course, I love it. I love it, bro. You know how many times I've seen Kanichi? Like four bro. times. So. Oh, I've rewatched it and reread the manga. <laughs> even though the manga is not even that good, I've rewatched it a million times. I've only read the manga once, but I've. Uh... Watch the anime quite a few times myself. And... Well, that's the thing. Even though, like, the masters and Kanichi are all, like, over the top, like, and crazy, the villains are often very realistic, and, like, it creates really realistic fights. And they often have, like, a reason for what they're doing, and then they end up, like, joining the good guys, depending on, like, their sense of, like, morality and stuff like that. Kanichi's great. Everyone should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, a, that's one thing is it's a very common trope for a, a bad guy or a villain to join the good guy side in a way, but it, there's a good, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And I think Kanichi is one of those shows that kind of does it the right way, whereas not all the villains end up turning good. Uh, it's just based on their motivations. Does it work out for them? Um, there are other shows where the bad guys become the good guys, and I think Spooks has mentioned a few before where it almost just doesn't even really make sense. It's just that the fact that they were popular with the fans, they decide to keep them around and yeah. almost yeah. feels like an asshole at times. I think Piccolo is a good example of like, like bad going to good. Who? Piccolo, Piccolo from Dragon Ball Piccolo? Z because after he merged with so many people, eventually he started to like have a good side to him and that started to like shine through. I don't remember exactly because it's been a long time. Well, even Who did Piccolo merge with? Well, he merged with like Kami and... Um... Well, I remember that. I remember he was like evil as hell. Before. Nail, but before that, he was already. I think yeah, I mostly like... for Piccolo, it was the time he spent with Gohan. Yeah. Uh, trying to Why get ready to protect the earth. Was... Father of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Right, right, right. Just leave, leave your child there. Go by. Because, <laughs> oh, I mean, Piccolo was born on the earth. He didn't really want anyone else to destroy it. And then when you spend a year training to protect something, you just kind of you grew attached in a way. Was he born on the Earth? He was uh, oh. born from an egg from King Piccolo, his father. Oh, yeah. That's uh, from Dragon Ball. So. Okay. I was I was thinking of Kami. Yeah, My Kami bad. wasn't oh, Kami born wasn't. on the Earth, but then they ended up fusing together anyway. It's Yeah, that's kind of a confusing thing. Um, <laughs> Depends on how you look at it, I suppose. Yeah. But I- I'll yeah. take your word for that. <clears throat> okay. N- nice segue coming here. So... <laughs> I would say, personally, my favorite thing about villains is definitely how I can relate or 
at least analyze their their motivation. I'd say their motivation is the most important thing of what makes a villain interesting because a lot of times they try and pull some crazy shit, but the reason is why are they doing that? So exactly. I would like to know, what's your favorite thing about villains, fellas? <laughs> well, I that's, that's that exact a same very good point. Well, Sorry, go ahead. Some of my favorite villains, be it from a... Like Hunter Hunter has some of my all-time favorite villains, be it the Phantom Troop or Meruem. And then you also get guys like a Crocodile from One Piece where all those villains have their own individual agendas. They don't... They're all well, just kind of people living in the world. What would you consider Hisoka, just real quick? Hisoka? I don't really consider Hisoka much of a villain. Uh, he's like... He is, but he's just... He's an antagonistic character to the protagonist, but he's not really good or bad. He just kind of goes around doing his own thing. He does a lot of bad stuff, though. I very I wanted to talk about Hisoka even before like thinking about it. He does, uh, but uh, how to how to say it? He he has a motive behind everything he does, which makes him such a relatable character. He's almost like the Goku of Hunter Hunter. Well, that's where that motivation comes in. Yeah, is uh, uh, he just wants a good fight, and because of that, he actually. How many times does he save Gon? Like, at just least in the first twice. Part. Nah, because he Illumi was gonna kill Gon in the Hunter exam. Uh, Gon, someone else was about to kill Gon in the Hunter exam. Um, there's twice right there. Got a lot of people. He saved him on uh, the tower whenever he Gon went up to the top floor, because Gon wasn't ready. He wasn't did not use Nen yet. Hmm. Uh, he helped out against the Phantom Troop a little bit. Uh, so that, so there's quite a few. There's quite a few instances where Gon... Now, whether Gon is a, uh, as a protagonist is a good character or as a hero or not is debatable on its own, but uh, just mm. the fact that Hisoka... I don't know, is antagonistic in a sense, but he's not really the bad guy to Gon. Well, I still, I still Island. feel like he could be a villain and still like low key help out the protagonist because like he's really only doing it so that he can fight going later. Yeah, I, like it's not like he's like, oh, I'm gonna save you because I'm a good dude. Like that's not it at all. He's saving yeah. him so he could be evil later on, basically. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He is a villain, and I, he's also one of my favorites if you do consider him one. But he's just he, he's not like a one arc type of villain either. He kind of stays. He's He's been in the series the whole time. See, I, I, I look at it this way. When we're talking about, let's say, with Dragon Ball, you have the androids which were created, and from their inception, they were evil, or they were programmed or controlled to be evil. So it wasn't that they became a villain. They just, right from the get-go, they were a villain. And then you have some different anime where there is a common goal between the protagonist and the antagonist. And because of that conflict between the two, fighting over power, fighting over a certain amulet or a location or whatever it might be, that's where the, the villain character comes in. Yeah, there's, there's a difference. For example... Like, I really wanted to talk about Hisoka. Um, I don't think he's like so you were like you were saying, like having a motivation is like kind of what makes a villain better, but he's not a stereotypical villain. Like uh, even Mr. Complete Random was saying, he doesn't really have like a overall goal that he's trying to achieve or a huge motivation. It's more like he's just in a really good character and you understand why he's doing stuff just based on his personality and stuff like that. So he's a little bit more like gray area, but I think he's a fantastic villain all the same. Even like Joker from like The Dark Knight or whatever, like he doesn't have a huge motivation really, but like his character type and like how cool they made the character still made them a good like made him a great amazing villain. So like I feel like having the motivation is definitely a plus, but it doesn't always need to be the case. That's true. That's oh, for true. sure. But something I want to go off about eventually is the fact that I also feel that like once a villain is like established and they do all this cool stuff with them and then you find out their motivation later, I feel like if the motivation's not good or it doesn't live up to what they're trying to do, I feel like it can really ruin a villain at the same time. So true. 
like, oh, I'm ready to go off, I'm but I would like to like examples. Pictures. What would be an example oh. of that? Okay. Oof. Sure you want to open this can of worms? Let's I'll do it. it. I'm ready. Okay. So I'm going to go with Obito and Madara right here. Okay, I was I was kind of thinking the same thing, but I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. Say those were the first to pop into my mind. When you Main said, villains supposed to be well, time. like let's not even cons like Kaguya, just get out of here. All right, that's <laughs> not no. But Obito did so much bullshit, and it was all because Rin died. Like, are you kidding me, Obito? Like, I'm getting triggered. Okay, and then Madara mainly. My big thing about Madara is I know we talked about this a little bit on Rant Cafe and the people rebuttaling me did have some good arguments. But really the only reason that Madara wanted to literally screw over the whole entire world was because he was a sore loser. Because mm -hmm. he lost to Hashirama. And like <laughs> I get the fact that like he grew up in a time where war was really bad. You know, kids were dying. There was always a winner and a loser. But like the fact that he was the loser is basically what made him want to literally fuck everybody and like that's it you're you're just sore that you lost all them years ago madara that's that's why see like Are you kidding me obito and madara were like cool characters so if they almost didn't release their motivation it would have been better because i agree it kind of ruined it and like with obito right i, I get that his turning point was the fact that rin died like that's what drove him over the edge I guess I can understand, you know, the death of your comrade's going to make you pretty upset. But, like, he went on to, like, break into the Leaf Village and set the Nine-Tailed Fox off. He mm -hmm. he, he basically uh, manipulated the Akatsuki so that he could lead them from behind. He was taking over the Mizukage at the time. What else did he do? He he started a war, for <laughs> one. The, the Fourth Great Ninja War, for that matter. Not just some measly uh disagreement <laughs> definitely one thing or one sad thing about all that is uh i'm pretty sure kishimoto had all that foreshadowed for a long time uh he had it all planned or he had a lot of that planned out because isn't the kanji for akatsuki stand for red moon or something like he had that whole i actually don't I, know offhand I, he's I believe... not on oda's level man but, He's and not, looked, but I believe uh, he at least had it foreshadowed that like what their final scheme would be. Like the other thing is they built Obito up so much to be this fantastic like ending villain for the series, mm -hmm. and then they throw Madara into the mix, and it's kind of like okay, well now that you got Madara here, we don't really need Obito anymore. So they just kind of literally toss him aside. Didn't and, they change villains like four times in the final arc? They did, dude. Well, like Obito I don't think they knew there. how to beat Madara. And then Madara showed up, and then Obito became the Jinchuriki, and Madara was like, nah, fam, I, I need this. So <laughs> then Obito gets wrecked. Forget Kaguya, like, don't even know. <laughs> but what about, I, like, the white Z Zetsu and all? Um... Oh, oh, that's right, fucking Zetsu! God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Bro, this is why... You got, he's got to be a One Piece fan, man. Like, the villains are amazing in One Piece. That's... Mm -hmm. I feel like One Piece is a very good... Like, okay, I'm a big fan of, like, groups of villains, right? Like, mm -hmm. the Akatsuki, the Espada, uh, the the Phantom Troop, hey, Troop, whatever you want to call them. Stuff like that. And in One Piece, I feel like, no matter what you do, there's always going to be tons of those. Because, like, for instance, the Warlords, right? They're They're not really, like, enemies. I guess some of them are. But the, in One Piece, everyone's going for like the same common goal, or at least a lot of people are, which is the mm -hmm. One Piece. So you're going to run into these groups of enemies, which are basically just other pirate crews. Or like you have Doflamingo, who doesn't really give a shit about the One Piece, but you know, the Doflamingo family, great set of villains. Uh, Doflamingo in general is a fantastic villain. One, he had like aspirations and goals. Two, he had a backstory for why he became the person he was today and like what drove his motivations. I'm not crazy about the like the whole sympathy thing. Like kind of Oda's been making us kind of feel bad for a lot of villains over and over again. And I'm not crazy, crazy about it. But at the end of the day, his villains are super well developed and then they like they really drive each arc. Really I feel like such a good job of that because do you remember, or Briggs, do you remember the guy with the baby pacifier that worked for Don Flamingo? 
Bro, I've seen your pink. I don't think any explanation in that. Fucking pink. I, I, I just started crying. I, I didn't cry, but I was really sad whenever it went to his backstory. Right, I started I, feeling I for him. Cried. I, I never I cried for One Piece. I get that. If you would have told me I would end up liking the guy dressed as a fucking baby, I would have told you you're stupid. But exactly, I don't. <laughs> I well, don't, that's I don't know. Oda's work is just amazing. But I, I know that you just said that you're not a big fan of it, Briggs. But I feel like Oda making us feel bad for these villains, or giving us a reason to feel bad for them, or like feel for them, is also like giving us a way to like uh, relate to them in some mm-hmm. ways, and also like understand their motivation. And I feel like mm-hmm. that's a good way to, like you said, develop them so that they're a much more like likable villain. But at the same time, it's not always good to like a villain, and I know Oda does do that a lot. So I guess I can see where you're coming from. See, I like it in general. I just like it to be like to change it up. I want every villain to be like somewhat different. And I found it's been a couple in a row now. Like even Big Mom, Doflamingo, like Senior Pink. It's kind of like over and over again where I'm getting this thing of like sympathy for the villains. And I got so I like it from time to time. But every once in a while, I just want a fucking like evil bastard that's like. Mm-hmm. Even if he has a backstory that's like without a sad backstory, like have a motivation, have everything. I want one with a, one without a ba- sad backstory. Just change it up from time to time, you know. And see, one of my favorite characters from One Piece is that exact same mold that Briggs just described. He doesn't really have a sad backstory, but he has motivation, and that is Crocodile with his organization of Baroque Works. Like that was one of my exactly all time favorite One Piece villains. Well, he was just an evil bastard, but he he wanted to own a country, like. He wanted his own country. He picked a country full of sand. Like there was no flaw in his plan. Do you do you feel that if you have a long running anime slash manga series, that after some time you have to start repeating different um, mo's? You have to you have yep. to pretty much do copies or duplicates of characters essentially. I was actually thinking the same thing when I was talking about it. Like, I think it's a little bit overdone, but with, like, the length of One Piece, it's kind of inevitable. I'm just kind of saying, like, it's been a couple in a row now, and I like it to get change up. Like, I don't mind 100 episodes later, do the same thing, whatever. Like, or a similar type of thing. It just, like, it's becoming, like, an ongoing theme with Oda within the last couple hundred chapters where it's, like, reoccurring over and over again. Which, is, it's not bad writing. I think it's fantastic writing in terms of, like, getting the de- developing the character i just like it to change up every once in a while so you're right. wanting another caesar clown yeah like i want i, I like being thrown off you know <laughs> caesar was a good villain caesar was a good villain i, like I mean I, I guess he had his motivation in the fact that he was being threatened by everybody else but i mean he still just was an evil guy to be evil like he's still, yeah exactly he's still an evil scientist right and he was like mm-hmm. he wanted to be the number one scientist he wanted to like develop certain things obviously he was getting like influenced like you said by big mom and doflamingo and kaido he was getting influenced <laughs> by everyone <laughs> i mean when you're smart and have the ability to make as many deadly weapons of war as he can uh all those influential people are going to want him on their side and use any means uh possible to do so exactly and that's one thing about the One Piece world is just the world building itself helps the build villains so much. There's just uh, everybody builds off of one another. Everybody influences one another. And there's not really just a good side or bad side. We get the Marines. There's good and bad Marines. There's good and bad Pirates. There's no just one side, good versus oh. evil. I feel like we talk about it maybe a little bit too much, but I, like I think... Me, too, spooky, and uh, the anime do like the combo of us on a podcast. It's just inevitable that we're gonna start talking about One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the world, the world building, ugh, everything about it, man. Like they, like he, like really did create this elaborate world. Everything's so well flushed out, and it drives the story. It, like, it drives everything. All right. Uh... Since you said we talked about it a little bit too much, what are some of you guys' favorite non shonen villains? Oh, you guys go. Hang on. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm going to just like do some brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, let me. Let me. <clears throat> Tell me. Well, 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 not talk about uh, One Piece. You, about, want like, to, you want me to go ahead? Or? <laughs> go ahead. I was just about to say, Do- like, I want, when I was th- thinking about some, it was like Stain and Doflamingo. So Doflamingo from One Piece and Stain yeah. from My Hero Academia. 
Stain had a backstory, like not a backstory, had like a like a motivation. He thought like society was getting corrupt in terms of like the heroes weren't being heroes to save people and be like it wasn't for justice. It was for more for fame, and it was like all becoming corrupt, corrupt, and that's why he was doing for what he was doing. So I thought he was a fantastic villain. But I'm gonna try to think of some non children ones. So you could go ahead, Jordan. I say that was Slain was definitely a, or Stain was definitely a very good villain. Uh, as far as non shonen goes, I think one of my favorites of all time might be Johan Liebert from Monster. Oh my just god! Because he, uh, the entire show is a mystery built around finding more about him. Uh, there's a couple different plot holes regarding him as far as uh, it doesn't show exactly how he does the things he does. But that's all. That could also just be covered up, as far as uh, he's just that amazing of a person, and you just the whole series. Uh, the reason people watch it is to find out more about that one villain in particular. Why he does he do what he does? Is it nur- or nurture versus uh, or was he born that way? Oh, nurture um, nature. Yeah, ver- nurture versus nature. Um, it, the whole show really does make you think, like, so much. Uh, I'm trying to think or find the Monster, words for it all. Monster is fantastic. Definitely <laughs> a very good show. I haven't seen it in uh, a while, so I'm trying to go based on memory. But I'm scrolling through anime I watched right now, trying to find some good fit, like, I think mm-hmm. of some good villains. You, now, you know? Oh, go ahead. I'm sure that, you know, you might consider this to be good or bad but honestly i think that one of the essential villains that from the 90s is uh a few of the queen characters from sailor moon i don't know if you guys i've i've watched it but it's been so long man i've never watched sailor moon so feel free to elaborate but i'm not going to be able to chime in much on it (laughs) well you had Queen Barrel, and uh, there's a whole bunch of them. But anyway, each one of these queens ends up controlling all of these like mini villains and sends them out to go ahead and kill all of the Sailor Scouts and take different relics and control the world and then the galaxy and et cetera, et cetera. But they've essentially just from the get-go had a plan to be evil to create more evil people or creatures or beings and destroy anything that's good all right pretty elaborate (laughs) you seem to be a pretty big fan of evil for the sake of evil correct or like i i like villains that are just pure evil right from the start. So simplistic, Cause then, Because then I go, screw you. And then when they die, which usually they end up dying, then you're, you're just kind of like, yes, victory. You know, just kind of like any other. Yeah. I guess it can be kind of a bummer when you don't know who to cheer for in a show. Like whenever an author almost makes you go, well, like I understand the villains. Do I even want to cheer against them? Like, so that's the thing with the whole sympathy thing, like we were talking about earlier. Like so, sometimes it's really good character writing, but it's been happening too much in One Piece, in my opinion, and that's why, like, I don't want to feel sorry for every like every villain. Like I want to hate them sometimes. Sometimes <sighs> great villains are just villains you could hate. I feel like I like villains a lot more when like I can like them more than hate them, though. Because like I I really hate Frieza quite a bit, uh-huh. and Frieza is a pretty good definition of evil just because they're evil. So and how great like does it feel all. when like Frieza gets his ass kicked? I mean, I was pretty happy because it's like I don't have to see him anymore. But then he gets resurrected twelve times, and <laughs> I just fed up. <laughs> but I'd say the whole third season of DBZ was all a fight against Frieza. Like it lasted way too long. But... If yeah. if you ever want a villain to just be, be pissed off at from the beginning of the entire series, if you haven't watched Black Butler yet. Alois Trancy is one where you will just hate that character and want him to just die completely. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a chance. I haven't watched Black Butler. But I have like not I... seen it either. Sorry, guys. This is my lack of... 
you, you, you if you give in. it if you give it a shot, I'm not saying that you're gonna oh my god love it, but it definitely has plot and character development. You learn a lot of different things, and I feel that they've put a lot of effort into the the anime itself. So it's definitely something good to check out, and. If you want villains where you're not going to feel sympathy for them, um, kind of spoiler alert that things do happen to Alois that you go, yes, um, then watch it. <laughs> um, just I'm trying, I've still been, I'm having a hard time thinking of non shonen okay. villains. I mean, like, I, I shonen if you want. I, I was just, I was just a well, thought trying to advance the conversation along, but it kind of stagnated I, I, it instead. I definitely thought of mine. It's got to be Team Rocket, like hands down. <laughs> For sure. Team Rocket, they're they're great villains. Like you like them, you hate yeah. them at the same time. And That's they're always know. getting in the way, trying to snatch your Pokémon so you know, hide your kids and your wife. They're going <laughs> to blast off again. It's it's always good fun. So yeah, they have comedic effect. You like them, you hate them. It's true. It's it's a good it's a good addition. Like there's always gonna be like real villains, but they're like kind of like the fake villains on the side. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty great. They are the what is it? The four kids version of a villain. They the the show that weakens or censors everything to make it all light and happy. And they never for like five year olds. Oh, <laughs> rip anime, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what happened? He just left. I don't know. Oh, rip. Um, I was going to say, talking about like villains you like <laughs> and hate, actually, I don't think this one's a shonen. Griffith. I'm I'm back. Back. Oh, I haven't seen Berserk. I, I really want to read Berserk. Like, I really Dude, I was just about liked... to bring up Griffith. <laughs> I, 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 was, I thought he was, it was shonen for a second, but I realized it's actually not. not so I, had, I did think of one. Um, Griffith, I really liked him. And then, like, obviously, like, he did some shit. He did nothing wrong. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything because uh, Too Spooky hasn't watched it. But, yeah, he's one of the examples of, like, you, like, kind of love him and hate him. Like, you really fucking hate him later on. But, like, there's always that little part inside of you, like, that wants to scream that Griffith did nothing wrong. There's <laughs> just such a fine line between the White Knight heroic character and most, most other series. Like that's what Griffith was kind of going towards, and then just what he becomes. There's such a fine line between the two, and it, it just poses so many questions. Like in the way it uh, portrays it all, you may not agree with what he did, but you definitely understand it. No. Yeah. Now here's here's even another one. Um, I don't know if you've watched this one either, but have you guys seen uh, Dean Angel? I have. Yep. Yeah. Now, Dean Angel has pretty much a yin and a yang character. It has the the good and the evil. It's Crad and black and white. Yeah, Crad and uh, the other guy, blonde guy. And uh, what's his name? I forget. The blonde guy. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever I don't. Remember, I don't remember the blonde guy very much though. Like he's not memorable to me. So I don't remember what he did or what his motivations were. I guess it's been a long time since I've seen that show, but how do you guys feel about series where it's kind of hard to tell who exactly is the villain in the scenario? I love it personally, but I because like two examples. Think about it. Oh, you're gonna talk about Death Note right now, aren't you? I, I, yeah, yeah. Let's put up. <laughs> two examples I can think of right off the bat, like Death Note for one, because it, it's kind of hard to decide who's the villain if you really yeah. think about it, because like Light's killing people, that's happening. Mm -hmm. But he's also making the world a better place, quote unquote. And we have L over here trying to stop that. But at the same time, he's also trying to trying to stop someone who's killing people. So it's like, who's mm -hmm. the real villain? And then we have Attack on Titan. Uh, <clears throat> spoiler alert. Uh, so now that like all these Titan shifters are a thing in the series, and we know about like the country of or continent or whatever you want to call it, Eldia, and marley and all that stuff it, it kind of makes you wonder like who's the real villain is it the eldians who can become titans or is it marley who's trying to basically uh go holocaust on these eldians 
in a sense, segregate them like Jewish people. <laughs> um, I love that shit, man. Like the whole like just like who's good and who's evil, like versus like Al versus Light, even Griffith versus Berser, uh versus Guts. Like they're both complete reflections of them of each other, right? Like one just like perfect knight, and one just like this rugged, like barbarian type of thing. Or even like um, Mr. Complete Random was saying in regard, like like the yin and yang thing. Sometimes having that reflection, sometimes you can't tell who's good, who's bad, or you could tell who's good, who's bad, but it's not. It could easily kind of like swap over. It, I think it's a good aspect of shows for sure. Well, for like, could we go ahead and say though that using Spooky's example, where you don't know exactly which you're going to root for or think, oh, that's the villain. But at the same time, it depends on the person who's actually watching it or reading it. That's true. They're, 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 it's kind of like... morals no. might be different. They might be saying, oh, war is bad, which is how it is with Attack on Titan, where you have you know, humans versus titans, but is it good for the humans are you rooting for the humans are you rooting for the titans are you you know who is it whose yeah. side are you on mm -hmm. and it's kind of one of those things where there's such a fine line between a anti-hero and a villain it's kind of like a uh, briggs brought up griffith from berserk but then there's also guts from berserk there's so many things that he does personally that like if you're reading through the manga you, you start to wonder like hey is he even in the right or another example would be lelouch from code geass like do the ends justify the means Exactly, and I think that's why I think he's really a villain with how many people he killed. Or everyone thinks Suzaku like they everyone hates him. I hate him too. Him. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I like Suzaku, Suzaku is an amazing character in terms of oh. he makes you really root for Lelouch because you hate him so much. Yeah, I guess that's true. That like <laughs> think about it. Think, I I never doubted Lelouch was a good guy. I was a, like like thought he was a bad guy, even though he killed so many people. Really, like he did a lot of shady shit, and I was always rooting for him. Because you, there was, there was no better route. Suzaku was an asshole. He's a dumbass. Like he murdered so many people. He I lied think, to so many other people, and you still root for him nonetheless. Like, honestly, honestly, it would have been harder to root for him if Suzaku wasn't there. Because you realize, like, because you would have been like, "There's a better way to go about this." But Suzaku makes you realize that there really wasn't a better way to go about it. I feel like it was really hard to root for anybody in Code Geass. To be fair, because definitely, like, Suzaku made me like completely disregard his side of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a fact, but was I, I wasn't really spectrum? siding with Lelouch either, or uh, Britannia for that matter. Everyone so kept I, changing sides in that show, though, so it's kind of a bad example. Yeah. See, like, so, see, maybe it's a personal thing for me. Like, that's why I say okay. Suzaku's a good character because I was siding with Lelouch, right, for majority of the series. Mm -hmm. Everyone so was Suzaku, though. That's what he was so wishy washy. Everyone was on everybody's side at some point. Well, yeah. okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me let me just kind of pause this conversation just for a second. Do you think that it's a lot harder to go against the main character or to dislike the main character because they're the main character? Like with Lelouch, you know, he's the main character. So saying, oh, I don't like him. I like whoever instead. Not, not necessarily because I've never been a big fan of Light from Death Note, but I'm a big L fan. See, and L's I not like necessarily the main character, but he's... I like Al, but I was still rooting for Light, you know? So I think there's some truth into what Mr. Like, Mr. Random is saying. Well, it's, it's one of those where it makes you uh, kind of pick a side, but I know plenty of people that don't cheer for Light, and I know plenty of people that do, so it's... I think it's really all about perspective, because, it like, really you, can, you can look at any series, and if you really try and dive into it, like, you can completely like make the protagonist the enemy if you really think about it like let's you use make, one piece for an example you can here. make goku the enemy but yeah continue <laughs> <laughs> you definitely could only to go on like if you take luffy and his crew right like they're pirates they're already like pirates can do some bad shit and luffy mm -hmm. has definitely uh shown that he's not following anybody's rules he's making right. his own rules and he's like going up, he's going up against the marines he's just saying screw you guys well he's saying screw everybody he says yeah. screw everybody he'll steal from yeah like we just worked with on sky island he does whatever yeah. he wants. like screw the yonko screw the the marines screw other pirate crews um, unless we're cool but and, and like even bleach for instance right 
uh, Soul Society, obviously things were a bit fucked over there. Like, we're, let's not deny that. But they had a nice system going. And then this punk kid comes in here, steals the Soul Reaper's, like, powers, essentially, because he, he took too much from Rukia. Then she gets in trouble, and, like, he basically got her executed. Like, spoiler alert, she didn't. But <laughs> he got her executed, basically. And then he's like, all right, well, we're just going to break in. Like, that's breaking and entering, Ichigo. What are you doing? Yeah, it's 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 weird thinking of thinking of it from that perspective. Like giving like like I was saying, Goku. A lot of the times, he puts Earth at risk, the entire universe at risk, just to have a good fight. Like, yeah, be in there. <laughs> he's over here, like, oh, is that guy a god of destruction? He can flick a planet and it's gone. Wow, let's go fight him on Earth, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. But uh, one of I the more were... sorry, so, go ahead. I was gonna say one of the more obvious. Uh, protagonist that i can think of that kind of makes you that can make you wonder if you delve in deep enough is uh going from hunter hunter again i was just thinking that because uh yeah. he, you can compare it to uve again from the phantom troop oh. at the very beginning he uh he basically says how can you kill people without feeling remorse how can you only care about people whenever they're close to you but then Gon does and eventually does that same thing later on in the series where he's willing to kill somebody just to get at somebody else like that has nothing to do with him just like a blind little girl he he goes back on what he said previous yeah not even necessarily that it's just the kid's morals he's not really sure what to make of everything he he has trouble handling shades of gray spinning everything, that moral compass he wants everything to be black and white and it's just not that's where i feel like a lot of villains or even non-villains for that matter i feel like instead of just black and white a lot of the times we're stuck in the gray and we kind of got to figure out like what shade of gray really is this right here is it one of the 50 is it <laughs> close is it closer to white i don't know and it's kind of like what mr completely random said earlier uh some a lot of people prefer for a villain to be just pure evil and gone was kind of the same way like he was fine with the phantom troop being evil and just going against him but then whenever Uvigan actually felt, or when people felt sad that Uvigan died, like Nobunaga got all mad about it, he just couldn't understand that. He was like, how can you feel remorse for your friends, but not, I don't know, the whole thing just made him mad that there was another side to those people, that they weren't just bad for the sake of being bad. They were, well, even if they were, they... They're human beings all the same, humans. right? Okay, yeah. well, what about Meruem then, right? He's, he's not a human. He's, he's a chimera ant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess he was somewhat birthed from a human, so to speak. But uh, he was literally born to to rule, to mm -hmm. to conquer, and yet he's over here falling in love with a blind girl, and it it's it gets really touchy feely. I mean, is that really a villain? Is that something a villain is capable of? Who's just I say I don't know anybody that was epitome of evil. I say I don't Some... know anybody that was actually cheering against Meruem by the end, like. Some villains, it was hard to. some villains have control while others don't. And you could go ahead and you could say that the ones who have control could potentially be more evil because of how much more they can do. Like if they can just annihilate a planet or a solar system or something like that in just one fell swoop. But then they go, nah, I don't want to do it today. You know, they're, they're putting, they, they have control and they have fate over a whole wide area. Kind of like Beerus from yeah. or somebody like that. Or to the same point of like what you're kind of trying to say with Miriam, like he had control as if like he was able to kind of, or like even other villains, like they're still going to be evil, but like you could tell, that they don't have to be evil. And those type of characters are ones that like, obviously I like a straight evil villain from time to time, some evil yeah. bastard, but like someone who's like, kind of on like, you could see that they're still human or like still like have morals and stuff like that are like a little bit more interesting from times because you don't know what, exactly what they're going to do. And that was one of the most interesting things about Meruem was he didn't really have those human like tendencies at the very beginning. But he developed them. He had a yeah. human side, and that was what kind of scared everybody about him. And Netro, the way they portrayed him, the 
right whenever he fought Meroim, he seemed dark and he almost seemed like the villain of the arc. Interesting I, is how portrayal can do that. Touching back on a subject we just kind of touched upon, I feel like villains are much more interesting when they aren't like already set out to be like this unbeatable godlike character where they already have everything going for them to be evil and do whatever they want. Like they're in control, like you said. Hmm. I find it a lot better when villains start out having to get this control themselves and like you actually get to see them progress as they like take control. Like a, a good example for me would probably be Blackbeard because you got to think this guy sat on Whitebeard's crew for how long just mm-hmm. waiting for the perfect devil fruit for him to like unleash his evil plans. And that's where it all started. He made a name for himself. He got what he wanted. And then he, he basically became a Yonko from there. That's like, true. He went from nothing to like everything. And that's because he set out to do it himself. Like he knew what he wanted and what he wanted was control. Boom. That's true. Like having like a backstory or like making it like fleshing out your villains is like a huge, like, like I I think one piece has the time to do that. Not every series has the time to flesh out every villain to that extent, but I think it's awesome when like you could kind of see the progress they've made, see where they came from. One thing that, uh, like Spooks just said, one piece does a good job of is a lot of people in one piece are going towards that same goal. They all want the one piece. They all want to be the king of the pirates. I'm not sure if that's actually Blackbeard's ultimate goal or not, but I would assume so. Um, and you see a lot of that same thing in a lot of sports anime and tournament arcs in general. Like that's why they just don't get old, because every rival team has their own backstory. Every uh, yeah, they all have the. They're all going towards that same goal. That doesn't necessarily make them bad, but they are the antagonist to the protagonist. But true. So even if they could become villains in a sense, you can still kind of see them working to obtain that same goal. Yeah, not every at- antagonist is a villain, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what about? Also, um, uh, oh, go ahead. Now we haven't touched upon half villains, and what I mean by that is a character that has half one side and half another, where the one side of them is the evil antagonist villain character whether they're half ghoul half demon etc and that demon or ghoul johan has split personalities from monster does that count i feel like it's a very niche topic like it, it only uh there's very few who well i guess there's not like few but there's not like a whole lot of villains who really fall under that category Say, can you name a couple? I'm trying. I'm trying to think, and I'm struggling. You said, uh, I guess Kaneki would be a half ghoul, but but Con- like, I, I guess that's Kaneki true. Half ghoul. But is he really a villain? Or I, then again, I haven't read well, the manga, he's... and if we're just going based on the anime, I don't think season two makes sense. Well, that's um, <laughs> that's kind of what we were talking about before with Attack on Titan, right? Like it's the same thing. Like who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Like technically. Kaneki, like he's, he's a good guy, right? But he's on the ghouls, like he's a ghoul. He's not on humanity's side. So is he a bad guy in the perspective of humanity? It's the same thing with t- Attack on Titan. These people from these other uh, countries or other like locations are viewed as like the bad guys to the people like within the wall. Titans are viewed as bad, even though they're kind of just instinctive. The, the Titan the, shifters are bad. The, the half, one big difference with Kaneki, though, is just the fact that he's the only one in that entire universe that can see both sides of the spectrum. Like, there's Sorry. humans, there's ghouls, and then he's the only one that can actually see both sides of things. Like, the, the one character I was thinking of, which people argue one way or another, where the character is actually a half-demon, is Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, he ain't no villain. He's yeah, he's not a villain hero. though. He's a punk, he's not, but he, he's not no villain. He's a lovable he's not, punk. He's not fully a villain or anything like that. But the demons are looked at as villains. Well, that's just that's just racism against demons, if you ask me. Yeah, about to say Karama and he <laughs> out plenty of times. I I guess let, let me ask this question to you guys: What exactly makes a villain a villain? Like, what do they have to do or be or 
what uh, what class of or uh, what characteristics do they need to fit to truly be a villain? I think that's a good question because, like we were thinking before, like just be opposing humanity doesn't make someone a villain, right? I say I think it depends on who you uh, ask and in what what circumstances you ask them. Well, that's why I'm asking you. Because well, I know because even when I think about it, <laughs> even when I think about it, there's uh, so many characters that. Here, Briggs, go ahead and talk because I'm having trouble gathering my thoughts together. Um, so I guess like whatever the like the norm is, someone who ugh, can't really even put it that way. It's tough. <laughs> well, yeah, because obviously there's a gray area between good on. and evil. Good and evil for uh, go ahead. Let, I I think I I might know where you're gonna try to go to, and I I'm pretty sure I can complete your thoughts. Hopefully, go for it, bro. The main anime um, characters, whether it be just briefly Dragon Ball, you have Earth as the main setting for the ma- most of it. So you have humans. Okay, so anybody that's mm-hmm. opposing humans is considered to be the antagonist, the villain, etc. Because we can empathize with the humans. Then if you talk about a different anime where, let's say, it's aliens are the first big group that we're in related to, and then you have an opposing side. It's usually the opposing side that is yeah. the villain. So it's each individual anime is different. Yeah. So it's basically the people... So to describe a villain for myself, someone opposing... Uh, someone opposing your main your main protagonist essentially or your main your someone opposing your main characters with evil intent in some way See, well then, it, i don't know if that's very but good. So even for that the each individual's moral compass is simply different so there's going to be people yeah. that have their perspective of like light yagami being a villain even though he is the protagonist uh so it's hard for yeah because you can't really say that. Elf's a villain so that, that that ruins my definition there because Al is opposing the government definition. opposing light. It's on perspective, situationing. Um, and there's just so many different ways to go with it. Um, it just because somebody uh, opposes the main character or the protagonist, yeah, that makes them an antagonist but doesn't make them a villain. I agree. And I don't know. Trying to answer Spooks' question is just so rough because it's there's tough. so many different it's, circumstances. It's, it's hard to describe a villain relating it to our world meaning what we're living outside of anime because we only have certain laws rules regulations guidelines and well every that's anime we, is different that's well, how we view villains you know you have terrorists you have well, sometimes a lawbreaker you know whoever but in an anime, what laws and rules and stuff are you going by? It could just be killing a human is the way that they survive, is the way that whoever survives. Or it could be, you know, you have to destroy spaceships in order to survive and you end up having casualties along the way or whatever it might be. Well, well in real life, you could always, like, there are people that trick other people be it like through business or whatever and take advantage of others. There are bullies. Like there's there's ways that aren't illegal, but they're but, still yeah. put you in a bad light. And then there's uh anime worlds like One Piece where there are laws and everything set up. There's the regulations, but even the people that we would look at as the heroes of the maybe not a hero, but the protagonists of the world, they don't even abide by the laws of the that are set I, in place. So I oh, feel like so. To answer this question, you kind of need to think ahead of time what exactly are good intentions and what exactly are bad intentions. Because I feel like deciding what the difference between a hero and a villain is deciding for yourself what exactly these intentions are. Because I could see someone as a hero and you could also see them as a villain. And it all depends on what intentions you think are what. Mm -hmm. It's very subjective. I was just curious. Like people could, that's what, people could think Light's a good guy, the good guy. People could think Light's the villain, right? Yeah, but at the it, same time, it's all up to people, what you think is right. Mm-hmm. I say at the same time, though, people could think Light has good intentions, and that doesn't necessarily make him not a villain or a hero. He could still be a villain with good intentions. So that's 
I guess, uh, well, this is kind of an off topic um, question, but how do you feel about people who you would say start out as some sort of like the hero protagonist type character and they end up becoming a villain later or they end Sasuke? up like, Oh, fuck Sasuke. But that's what I was <laughs> fuck Sasuke. <laughs> we, we I had him in mind. I had to, I had to. I had him in mind. <laughs> like I was ready. You get, you guys hit me in the feels. I mean, I, I don't cause playism or anything, but <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. You do. Uh, <laughs> fuck Sasuke. Battle begin. I'm sorry. I, Sasuke pisses me off more than anybody. I think of Sasuke as a straight villain. He is a str- like he is the definition of villain. Nah, he's just. He's, <laughs> that's, that's, All right. That's, hey, I, I would agree. Answer the unanswerable question. He, like, like, how do you define a villain, Sasuke? There was so many points in the story where i was like sasuke was coming back around for me i was like okay he's not just you know confused he, he's starting to do things on his own but then after everything is said and done this is where what pisses me off the most after kaguya is defeated everyone's happy you know happy ending sasuke is like you know what fuck the leaf village after everything like he came into this war and he's like i'm gonna be the hokage guys and they're all like yeah right sasuke and now he's like hey Forget about that Hokage shit. Let's go blow up the village. What do you say? All right. See you later, fellas. I'm out of here. Are you fucking kidding me, Sasuke? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know it's just a reason for him and Naruto to fight and Sasuke be like, you know what? I- I'm being silly. I just needed my face punched really hard. But the fact that you needed your face punched that hard, Sasuke, fuck you. <laughs> you are a villain. I don't, and, and now he's over here abandoning his daughter and Boruto to go sightsee. You, Thanks. you're worse than Goku. Fuck you, <laughs> Sasuke. Okay, yeah. go ahead. What are you saying, bro? Just imagine with my What If series, okay? Remember remember those topics I was telling you about? Mm-hmm. What if Uchiha clan was never massacred? Ooh. Well, oh, see? Then it, then it spirals into all this other stuff. Now... Let's just, for argument's sake, say that Sasuke is evil. Would he then be evil if that massacre never happened? Well, see, that there, that leads to a different problem. Because Obito was planning on attacking the Leaf Village a second time. Like, he was pl- like after he released the Nine-Tailed Fox, and basically, like, if you don't remember specifically, like, I recently kind of touched up on this. So basically you had to have the Sharingan to control the nine-tailed fox, right? So that's what led the Leaf Village like council to like suspect the Uchiha, which kind of led to the whole uprising and then massacre later on. So no matter what, like they would have been suspicious of the Uchiha. But if they were like, you know what, the Uchiha are fine. There's no reason to set up this whole elaborate massacre. Everything's good. If that didn't happen Obito was still planning on coming back to the village because Itachi ran into Obito and was like, all right, dude, I will take out the Uchiha and you can get your revenge on the Uchiha in that way by me doing it if you leave the village alone. So if the if the Uchiha did not need to be massacred, I feel like Obito would have came back in. He would have had a more solid plan. And Uchiha and everyone else alike are going to die anyways. So there, there goes the entire village right there. Yeah, so like basically Obito's coming back. He's gonna fuck shit up. I don't know if it's gonna be successful, but it's gonna be bad. And who yeah, knows? Maybe 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 uh, Sasuke's whole clan could have got massacred by him because like he was pretty pissed off at the Uchiha. Like he was ready to screw them up. I anyways, I don't, I don't see Toby pulling a or pain pulling a pain. I forget what his real name was. Uh, where he Nagato. just revives everybody. Nagato. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like some shit's gonna happen, and then Sasuke's still gonna be a butt hurt villain. That's all I'm saying. Mike He's gonna drop. be a villain no matter what in Spooks' eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty biased against Sasuke, I would say, but yeah, he's a villain. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. We have now defined a villain. <laughs> Sasuke and like anyone Sasuke. somewhat like him in any way. <laughs> Well, like, um, I mean, you can't even call him a hero because, like, the whole time he's literally just out to kill his own brother for revenge. Like, he, he doesn't even have good intentions to start. <laughs> like, he's, oh, he's straight up, like, almost a villain at the very he beginning. He was an Avenger. He was avenging his clan. 
Yeah, but that I I, I personally think that avenging is a very a villain like tendency there, Jordan. So it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you said he didn't have any good intentions. That that could be well, debatably a good. Intention. I, I don't think it's a good intention. Like, yeah, but your plan's dead. Get over it, Sasuke. Be and a you're man. You're gonna let the man that caused it all walk around free, doing whatever he wants. Oh, okay. Well, then you don't have to kill him. You can uh, imprison him, make him a prisoner of war. I don't and know. why did he have to be the one to like go out and do it? You know, yeah. they could have went on a mission. Like, they, like if he was part of the Akatsuki, they're trying to get the Akatsuki. There was no reason for him to go out by himself. It's a like, he was going strictly. He was, he was going strictly for revenge, right? It like, wasn't for justice in any way. Oh, I agree that you know, Sasuke wasn't a hero. I'm not arguing for that or anything. I just never find him back around to fuck Sasuke. Opposite side yeah, of the spectrum here. <laughs> what do we call an Itachi? Because, like, Itachi's, like, pretty close to hero, if you ask me, if oh, he's not Itachi a hero. Itachi was a hero. But, like, but he massacred his church. whole clan. Like, that's pretty oh. fucked up. Well, but he did it, but if he did, he did it for the village. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. In my many psychology classes, one of the big topics, which this is going to relate to this perfect scenario to a T, and I'm going to ask you guys this question, okay? So you have this train barreling down the tracks, okay? And it's about to hit the important and well-loved diplomat, okay? Going to kill him completely. You know you could foresee the future that this diplomat is going to die, all right? But all right. you are on top of this bridge, which is maybe, a, let's say, a mile ahead of where this diplomat is tied up to the train tracks or whatever. And you can go ahead and throw some random person onto the train tracks, kill that person that you threw off the ledge. But in turn, it would stop the train. Like the train would be able to go, oh shit, I killed somebody. And then the train stops before killing the diplomat. So would you push the person over or would you just let fate kind of happen and let the diplomat die. So See, it's kind of like the same thing with Itachi, where he could have let havoc happen, and then he's not a villain in the slightest, because he just kind of said, I'm not going to kill anybody unless something happens. Or he took action, and he was like, I have to sacrifice all these people, kill them all, to protect other people. So it's like, what what side of the tracks do you kind of look at um well first of all i think to make your like example question a little bit better maybe it would have been like um there's a there's like a bus of people stuck on the train track and then like you could like change tracks and make it kill one person instead well that that was another, thing. that was another one that could have been yeah like that's what like your first example is very one for one which is a good example but I'm saying, like, for, to relate to Itachi, I think the, like the, a bunch of people versus one people, or like five people versus like thirty people, is more like, I guess, related. Or maybe even if like, what if those like thirty people are all like prisoners? Yeah, I mean, that makes it more accurate. Would what you? If, oh, I was about to say, if you had to redirect the bus or re to redirect the train from the bus to your family or something like that, because that's how personal it was for Itachi. He yeah. had to take that whole burden upon himself, and that's not an easy thing to do. Like, I don't think I could do it, but. How would you, okay, how would you, let's say, let's do like a little bit of role playing. Okay. You're Itachi. Your clan is alive right now. And you do have intel that there is going to be a, the plan against the, the village. Okay. And yeah, they were in the wrong as well. That's one thing you got to point out is like yeah. the Uchiha clan was in the wrong. They weren't exactly being good people. Yeah, well, neither was the village. Like they didn't. Yes, I, the Uchiha yeah. didn't do anything, but they were still suspecting them. Which I mean, Obito did a good job setting that up. I'll give him that. Yeah. But but also, it, if they were on both sides. If they were to rebel, and the way they went about it, but there could have been like casualties. They would have been weakened as an army against other, uh, like other nations. Like mm -hmm. it probably would have been ended the Leaf Village altogether. It could have been the end of the Leaf, Leaf Village, not just like warriors, because like not just like because they're kind of like they're going to be put at risk like other people could be put at risk just because of the Ochiha's like goal well that's why i feel like itachi is a hero though because that's, he knew that's all what i was trying to 
Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to put into perspective. Is yeah. like I'm just letting people know that like Ucha, like that's why I agree. I think Itachi's a hero. 100%. But then, then we got Sasuke over here who just wants <laughs> to destroy the village because he's fucking sad and butthurt and he's upset. I mean, I guess like during that part, I would be pretty upset too if I found out that my brother, who I thought was literally just a evil murderer, turned out to like save the whole village and myself just like to save the village i feel like i would be pretty upset that the village covered all that up oh, and i, I would want too. revenge but at the same time later on down the road what after all this is said and done and sasuke you know talks the talks to all the hokage and everything he still wants to go back and just be like you know what i'm gonna kill everyone in the village anyways like every yeah fuck it <laughs> fuck, fuck sasuke <laughs> 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 And oh, another thing that uh, this is completely off topic, but I just want to throw it out there because it pisses me off. So, do you remember when uh, Sasuke was literally going to kill Sakura? Like he was just going to do it, like yeah. right before Kakashi stopped him. I think. <laughs> Why the fuck would Sakura go and marry this guy? What is wrong with her? This, this is I'm why. Just throwing that out there. That's, that's no, everyone hates Sakura and Sasuke, bro. Like, like, fuck. <laughs> it's, okay, fuck. it's a perfect. It's a perfect match. It is. If yeah, I, I go up to some random, all right, soccer. If some girl what? is obsessed hey. with me, soccer. and I go up to her and I put a knife to her throat, and I'm like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna kill you. You suck eggs." And then she would love you even more, bro. I'm like, hey. "Oh yeah, by the way, I'm also gonna destroy your home and everyone who lives there." Ha! Yeah, I'm Sasuke. And then <laughs> oh, after Naruto punches my bitch ass in the face. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to come back to the village. I think I was just being stupid. You honestly think I'm going to go up to her and be like, oh, yeah, hey, I'm sorry about, you know, almost fucking killing you. Let's Multiple get married times. and have a child. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm going sightseeing after, you know, after they're born. I'm just throwing that out there. All right. <laughs> Woo! Man, what is that? Villain! That's a fucking villain. That's <laughs> All right, guys, I want to summarize three things that we've learned in this podcast. Fuck Sasuke, One Piece is better than Naruto, and watch Kenichi. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good summary. God yeah. damn it. I fucking hate Sasuke so much. <laughs> I hate him. Oh, man. Oh, by the way, I know we hey, talked about DBZ I... villains before and how none of them have good motivations, but I thought of one, though he is non-canon, that has, like, the best motivation of all. Go ahead. Freaking Broly. He was mad about uh, Kakarot crying when they were babies. <laughs> like, how much of a grudge do you have to have? What about Majin Buu, though? He just wanted some candy. <laughs> well, <laughs> he was hungry. I don't know. You gotta, if, if, all right, if there was a bunch of people walking around who you could turn into chocolate, wouldn't you want to do it? I feel like I would. <laughs> that, that might make me a villain, though. I don't know. I just feel like I was hungry, and these people well, were in the wrong place. If you're like a god that's like woken up from your slumber, every like, like humans are basically insects to you. If I could turn insects into chocolate and eat them, I would eat. I would do it. That's, right. That's, that's a good point. But I was just uh, you you were talking about Sasuke and the whole revenge thing had me thinking of Broly, like he wanted revenge against Goku, the crying bro. thing. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think we should uh. Call it, a, call it a day. Oh, you're probably right. It's been going on a while, huh? Yeah. I tried to keep them around an hour. I think we're over an hour now at this point. Yeah, right about an hour. They are so fun, and we will be back next week. <laughs> but uh, I think that is the end of this video. Do you guys want to go ahead and talk about your channel super quick? Mr. Completely Random, you want to go first? Yeah, I could go first. I mean, I've been trying to post a few different series. One, I have to upload uh, tonight it's called my top five tuesdays where i talk about different anime related things anime wednesday where i bring into um a whole bunch of different anime related stuff that i have or can talk about and then i have my new series coming out my what if series which briggs and i are gonna do the first one which i'm kind of excited for you should definitely uh put in the uh the one you were talking about, if the Uchiha clan never died. Flush that, that out. That's, uh, that's the first one. And then we're also talking about uh, Kenichi. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's lit. I, I, I know he has a uh, <clears throat> a liking for that. But, yeah, so I, I'm definitely working on some very interesting <sighs> series. And uh, go check it out. Yeah, everyone should definitely check him out. 
And then we got Too Spooky and the anime dude. Whoever wants to go first, go ahead. Go ahead, Too Spooky. <sighs> well, well, thank you, Jordan. So, hello, I, I'm Too Spooky. I, I, you know that by now. You know that by now. But basically, my channel, it, it's kind of a cluster, but it's mainly based around different facts about things such as anime and other forms of media. And there's also, you know, we break down and analyze some stuff in, in explained format. And I unbox some stuff sometimes. And my upload schedule is trash, but you should go check it out if you haven't already. And on to you, Jordan. All right, guys. Uh, hey there, guys and gals. I am the anime dude. I like to sit alone in my dark room and overanalyze fictional characters from Chinese cartoons. So if that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to go check me out. Not to be confused with the anime man. No, not, not the anime man. I'm Jordan. I am not Joey. <laughs> I am the dude. I am not the man. And I am Briggs. Yeah. Uh, hype. Let's watch Kanichi, and I'll see you guys all next time, dudes. Shinpaku. 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 Bang from San Francisco. I'm leaving that in. Oh, I forgot to say bang. <laughs> all right. Stop the broadcast.